Okay, it is time for some R-Type. And this is the 48K version. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> It is possible to, to actually play it uh, with the Kempston joystick. But for some reason, <laughs> I never can get that to work. Um, don't know where I left the manual, but uh, perhaps it's just by pressing the K to get it to uh, to, to do the Kempston. But, you know, let me just type in those... Uh, those letters and uh, play with the keys and mind you I, uh, I am used to playing my video games with uh, with um, with the joystick and the Kempston interface and I'm not so used to playing uh, games with the keyboard playing games with the keyboard was something I actually learned uh, when I was playing the early PC games uh, so I'm I'm not as good at this uh, <laughs> as I would like to. I did I remember I actually uh, was able to use the the Kempston joystick uh, prior on this, but uh, for some reason, you know, it's just uh, yeah, it doesn't seem possible. But as you can see, this is a very very nice version of the uh, of the game on uh, on the Spectrum. Very colorful graphics and. Uh, and nice explosions and it's tough as nails and uh, yeah hopefully I'll be able to show you some uh, some of the more uh, advanced levels because uh, they do look supreme so this is actually also one of the better looking games on the on the spectrum and uh, yeah, as you can see uh, not everything is animated as smoothly as um, is in the other schmups that I showed you in a previous video um, that has to do with speed of course um, but, uh, but but yeah large part of the screen is actually a smooth scrolling and I it's almost full screen smooth scrolling actually um, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see that uh, that uh, when we get into the more difficult areas uh, <laughs> I keep dying uh, when we get into the more difficult areas, the more elaborate areas, you can actually see that the whole screen is smooth scrolling. Uh, quite a feat on the spectrum. Uh, and of course, uh, if they were also to to have uh, the game game graphics, the, the the avatar, the shooting avatar, and the opponents smooth scroll, uh, it'll be just slow. I mean, the machine just won't be able to go. So uh, yeah, it's game over. Uh, let's try it again because this is just <laughs> this is just uh, bad 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 okay and let's uh, let's continue because I really need to show you you guys some of, of the more later levels um, but yeah perhaps this is fun to watch you can just watch me die all over again uh, as you can see, uh, the attack patterns are more or less the same every time you uh, you play. So it's it, it, it is basically uh, a game that you can uh, play much better if you use your memory to yeah, here I die again. I mean, and that has to do with the fact that um, the last couple of times I played R Type, I played this on the um, I played this on the uh, other systems. I played this on the Master System, and I actually played this on the Commodore 64 as well. So, and the the enemy attack patterns are a bit different. I mean, they are very similar, but still uh, a bit different. And uh, yeah, let's let's see how uh, how I do. Okay, that, that's that's yes. Ah. Okay, after killing this guy, I should be able to get a bit further on. Uh, this whole orb thing uh, is something that you... Ooh, I almost got killed there. Is uh, something you also see in the Konami shooters like Radius. And, uh, and uh, yeah, this is something that you see in, uh, in the Iron shooter as well. Okay, it's very, very nice to have that orb thing in front of you because it'll help you and I often I often die here let's see if I die here 
Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't have to go that far. And let me see if I can... Yeah, and I don't, I don't have the orb, so... It's going to be tough as nails. Uh, but there's a way around this if you don't have the orb. But you have to fly... Oops. Ah, they actually shot through the uh, through the background. Well, that sometimes does happen because the bullets, they move uh, a whole character position. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they are able to go through the edge sometimes because, uh, yeah, because of the whole character position that they took. Yes, this is what I, what I meant. You can lure them uh, ahead and then move back and then you'll be able to shoot them. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> oh, I'm actually, usually I'm much better at this game, but tonight I'm just rubbish. Yeah, and that, that's what you get when you, you come back from work and you had a meal and you're all rosy and and, and uh, satisfied with all the blood going to your gut and uh, the reflexes are just <laughs> far from good enough to be able to play this game. Uh, yeah, lure them out and see if I am able to... Yeah. The trick is not moving too far ahead over here. And it's been a long time since I actually played this. Uh, so I won't... Be, yeah, I might die here because I usually... Ah, no. Okay, let's get that one. Yeah, I just love the way that looks. Okay. And now we get a circular thing. Yes, this is the same in all versions, and you actually have to use the orb to. Uh... Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> let's 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 view uh, let's view another game. I mean, you guys get the drift. Uh, R type, great game. Okay, Taito, Taito's flying shark, Firebirds. Well. And here you can see another beautiful game by D. Robinson, the same programmer who did Terra Cresta. It's obvious that the routines used over here are very similar to the ones that uh, he used in Terra Cresta, and uh, it's amazing what a single guy can actually uh, do with uh, with the spectrum. I mean. Yeah, amazing. I mean, he has invented his own sprite routines. He's uh, able to all, uh, use full screen, uh, full screen scrolling. Uh, and you know, I'm I'm a bit better at this game than the R type game. Uh, yeah, probably because D Robinson games fit my brain grooves more easily than the other games. But yeah, I, I've I've been playing this game a lot on the Commodore 64 and the, later on the Amiga as, as well, and it's a, it's a great game, it's a great game, and it's very similar, uh, and I just love games like this. I mean, it's, it's somewhat reminiscent of uh, Raiden and 1942, uh, but also Terra Cresta, and uh, I, I, I do think that uh, this game also uses uh, the luminescence uh, the two color, the two shades of, of, of uh, the two shades of, of uh, yellow to uh, to make it just to, to make it to make the screen have just a tad more uh, contrast than uh, just monochrome graphics. So that was a very nice trick that uh, Mr. Robinson did uh, to actually to enhance uh, the gameplay. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, great game and uh, very much worth uh, playing. As you can see, I'm a little bit better, um, but not good enough. <laughs> so let's move on to the next game. Okay, the next game, Axelon by Hewson. Or Hewson, I'm not sure. How would you pronounce that? Um... Excellent, 1987 by Hewson. And let's press start.
start. Now this is an excellent looking game. Uh, Nodes of Yashot jumps to mind and others that look very similar. Uh, also uh, Cybernoid, Cybernoid 2, uh, similar graphics, very colorful graphics. And I always forget how to use my grenade. I'm not sure. I, I, I always forget. I mean, was it a key on the keyboard? Let me try. Uh, no. I'm supposed to blast this to bits and going through my ammo like this probably won't get rid of that machine. Perhaps if I get a bit closer. Well, this way, <laughs> this way I'll never be able to show you anything about the game. I mean, it's, there's much more to this game than me just instantly dying and going through my lives like this. But, but just look at the, the animation, uh, you know, the lights that are flashing, the, uh, the exhausts of the spaceship uh, above, the level of detail in the, in the rock formation. And <laughs> I try to distract you from the fact that I actually failed miserably. Capstan joystick interface. Start game. Perhaps this, this will work a bit better. And perhaps by moving down the joystick or holding the fire button. Yeah, something like that. That should actually uh, make it work. Let's see if uh, that will become reality. A reality. Okay, let's see if I'm able to get some action going on. Whoops. Well, you have enough lives to, to actually try it out. So if I'm a bit closer, will I be able to destroy it like that? No. I, I do need my grenades. How on earth... Uh, right. B space C Z. Ah. Okay, so by holding the fire button, I actually fire a grenade. Okay, this makes the game much more interesting, but at the same time, you see that I only have nine grenades. And you get 99 bullets of ammo. And with all these baddies coming your way, you actually quickly go through your ammo. Or your ammunition. Uh, but luckily there are supplies along the way. And this is actually very similar to Cybernoid or... You know, it's 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 a sideways scroll, scroller, shoot 'em up, puzzle thingy, and uh, yeah, I just love the way how this looks. And uh, although the Spectrum only had seven distinct colors, it had most colors in two uh, luminescence. Uh, so you had light green, dark green, light yellow, and dark yellow. As you can see um, in this uh, in this uh, screen, that both both shades of the same color are used to create some nice effect, and that is something that uh, the Commodore 64, with its 16 colors, uh, they they had more dis different and distinct colors. They had two shades of, of gray. They had um, colors that were similar to to blue, and you had orange, and you had yellow of course but um, yeah the whole look and feel of the games was completely different to this and the, this these colors are all very primary in some way and uh, resulting in a very bright and colorful uh, yeah just 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 picture and the thing is that uh, when I was a kid I used to play in a black and white screen so <laughs> I actually didn't see all this uh, and now with a CRT, I can. 
Ikari Warriors. Oops. <laughs> well, you obviously don't want to press um, <laughs> break during the loading. The Ikari Warriors, created by Elite Systems 1987, originally SNK Corp. Japan 1986. Um, a commando style shoot 'em up, also a two player game. And the trick is to uh, define the keys properly so you will be able to have two players on the rubber keys of the spectrum at the same time uh, playing this game. I mean, <laughs> I did play this with a friend. Uh, I think he's on YouTube as well, Custard or Mr. Custard. Uh, I played this with a friend and we both had our fingers <laughs> on the rubber keys of the spectrum and we just uh, were playing this game. I did define the, the two-player uh, uh, joystick, I think, because there is some interference. Let's let's restart and okay. So I've restarted, and now I will only define the joystick for the player one and the player 2, uh, I'll just define some keys and uh, so I'll define some keys and fire, okay, toggle, okay one player game, this, this should work a bit better so this feels very much like uh, Rambo and it's tough as nails <laughs> This feels very much like a Rambo uh, Commando and I, I honestly must say that I didn't play this game a whole lot um, because it took quite a bit of time loading and it, sometimes it failed and uh, yeah I, I did run into some troubles defining the, key, defining the keys and stuff but yeah uh, great looking game and very fun to play as well uh, but I didn't play it as much as I would uh, would have liked to. But uh, yeah, it's a great looking Spectrum game, and also using uh, smooth scrolling and uh, pixel perfect action. So uh, time to move on to uh, the next game. Okay, the last game, the last game in this part is Highway Encounter by Vortex Software and Vortex is, is, a, is a game company to be reckoned with on the Commodore 64 because they also create created the wonderful Android 2 and Android 2 is one of my favorite games on the spectrum as well I'll be able to show you that in another in another episode and uh, yeah let, let's first see uh, what you can encounter in this wonderful video game. It's an isometric view video game and there's a ton of great isometric view video games on the Spectrum. And the Spectrum had a faster processor than uh, most other 8-bit home systems uh, at the time. Um, a faster processor but also the graphics were a bit faster than for example on the MSX because uh, the Spectrum had direct access to graphics memory, whereas the MSX you had to go around uh, to, to go around uh, some. Uh, yeah, it was it was less direct. <laughs> okay, let's let's play the game uh, because I'm just m mumbling nonsense here. Um, but you can see Camston, as you can see, um, yeah, most Spectrum games are a lot of good Spectrum games. They uh, they uh, yeah they offered a lot of control modes, cursor, Camston, Sinclair, Spectrum, and joystick interface all was supported. And this is I mean look at that I mean this is all graphics modes and what you have to do is guide your your little train of droids across. And uh, you have a, a weapon uh, to destroy all those foes. And you can also use those canisters to block the enemy so they won't come into contact with you. But as you can see, this game is tough as nails. It also relies heavily on memory because all the every time you play it, it's the same. 
but it just looks amazing. It's a very strategic game, Highway Encounter. Uh, there's also a ver version available on the Commodore 64, and uh, I remember we actually had both uh, both tapes, and uh, the Spectrum version was actually a bit faster uh, because the Commodore 64 had a slightly slower processor, not very, not uh, a, a totally different beast. Uh, uh, 650, what is it, 6510 or 65005 a processor, whereas the Spectrum had a Z80 processor running at 3.5 megahertz. The Commodore was only 1 megahertz, or and uh, yeah, it, the Spectrum was, was just a, a bit faster with these uh, graphics, uh, character graphics uh, modes, and uh, all to distract from me, hopelessly dying, dying and dying game over well this concludes uh, tonight's uh, video on uh, spectrum games that i love i'll be back with another video soon